High-definition television provides a resolution that is substantially higher than that of standard-definition television. HDTV may be transmitted in various formats, 1080p, 1920a, 1080p, 2,073,600 pixels per frame, 1080i, 1920a, 1080i, 1,036,800 pixels per field or 2,073,600 pixels per frame. A non-standard CEA resolution exists in some countries such as 1440a, 1080i. 777,600 pixels per field or 1,555,200 pixels per frame. 720p, 1280a, 720p, 921,600 pixels per frame, the letter P here stands for progressive scan while I indicates interlaced. When transmitted at 2 megapixels per frame, HDTV provides about 5 times as many pixels as SD. History. The term high definition once described a series of television systems originating from August 1936. However, these systems were only high definition when compared to earlier systems that were based on mechanical systems with as few as 30 lines of resolution. The ongoing competition between companies and nations to create true HDTV spanned the entire 20th century, as each new system became more HD than the last. The British High Definition TV service started trials in August 1936 and a regular service on November 2, 1936 using both the Baird 240-line sequential scan and the Marconi EMI 405-line interlaced systems. The Baird system was discontinued in February 1937. In 1938 France followed with their own 441-line system, variants of which were also used by a number of other countries. The US NTSC 525 line system joined in 1941. In 1949 France introduced an even higher resolution standard at 819 lines, a system that should have been high definition even by today's standards, but was monochrome only and the technical limitations of the time prevented it from achieving the definition of which it should have been capable. All of these systems used interlacing and a 4 to 3 aspect ratio except the 240 line system which was progressive and the 405 line system which started as 5 4 and later changed to 4 3. The 405 line system adopted the revolutionary idea of interlaced scanning to overcome the flicker problem of the 240 line with its 25 Hz frame rate. The 240 line system could have doubled its frame rate but this would have meant that the transmitted signal would have doubled in bandwidth, an unacceptable option as the video base band bandwidth was required to be not more than 3 MHz. Color broadcasts started at similarly higher resolutions, first with the US NTSC color system in 1953, which was compatible with the earlier monochrome systems and therefore had the same 525 lines of resolution. European standards did not follow until the 1960s, when the PAL and SECAM color systems were added to the monochrome 625 line broadcasts. The Nippon Hazakai Archive began conducting research to unlock the fundamental mechanism of video and sound interactions with the five human senses in 1964, after the Tokyo Olympics. NHK set out to create an HDTV system that ended up scoring much higher in subjective tests than NTSC's previously dubbed HDTV. This new system, NHK Color, created in 1972, included 1125 lines, a 5 to 3 aspect ratio and 60 Hz refresh rate. The Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, headed by Charles Ginsburg, became the testing and study authority for HDTV technology in the international theater. SMPTE would test HDTV systems from different companies from every conceivable perspective, but the problem of combining the different formats plagued the technology for many years. There were four major HDTV systems tested by SMPTE in the late 1970s, and in 1979 an SMPTE study group released a study of high-definition television systems, EIA monochrome, 4-3 aspect ratio, 1023 lines, 60 Hz, NHK color, 5-3 aspect ratio, 1125 lines, 60 Hz, NHK monochrome, 4-3 aspect ratio. 
2125 lines, N or Hertz, BBC color, 83 aspect ratio, 1501 lines, N or Hertz. Since the formal adoption of digital video broadcasting's widescreen HDTV transmission modes in the early 2000s, the 525-line NTSC systems as well as the European 625-line PAL and SECAM systems are now regarded as standard definition television systems. Analog systems Early HDTV broadcasting used analog technology, but today it is transmitted digitally and uses video compression. In 1949, France started its transmissions with an 819-line system. The system was monochrome only, and was used only on VHF for the first French TV channel. It was discontinued in 1983. In 1958, the Soviet Union developed TH Sent Ransformator, the first high-resolution television system capable of producing an image composed of 1,125 lines of resolution aimed at providing teleconferencing for military command. It was a research project and the system was never deployed by either the military or consumer broadcasting. In 1979, the Japanese state broadcaster NHK first developed consumer high-definition television with a 5-3 display aspect ratio. The system, known as High Vision or Muse after its multiple sub-NIWIST sampling encoding for encoding the signal, required about twice the bandwidth of the existing NTSC system but provided about four times the resolution. Satellite test broadcasts started in 1989, with regular testing starting in 1991 and regular broadcasting of BS9CH commencing on November 25, 1994, which featured commercial and NHK programming. In 1981, the Muse system was demonstrated for the first time in the United States, using the same 5 to 3 aspect ratio as the Japanese system. Upon visiting a demonstration of Muse in Washington, U.S. President Ronald Reagan was impressed and officially declared it a matter of national interest to introduce HDTV to the U.S. Several systems were proposed as the new standard for the U.S., including the Japanese Muse system, but all were rejected by the FCC because of their higher bandwidth requirements. At this time, the number of television channels was growing rapidly and bandwidth was already a problem. A new standard had to be more efficient, needing less bandwidth for HDTV than the existing NTSC. Demise of Analog HD Systems The limited standardization of analog HDTV in the 1990s did not lead to global HDTV adoption as technical and economic constraints at the time did not permit HDTV to use bandwidths greater than normal television. Early HDTV commercial experiments such as NHK's Muse required over four times the bandwidth of a standard definition broadcast, and HD Mac was not much better. Despite efforts made to reduce analog HDTV to about two a, the bandwidth of SDTV these television formats were still distributable only by satellite. In addition, recording and reproducing an HDTV signal was a significant technical challenge in the early years of HDTV. Japan remained the only country with successful public broadcasting of analog HDTV, with seven broadcasters sharing a single channel. Rise of Digital Compression Since 1972, International Telecommunication Union's radio telecommunications sector had been working on creating a global recommendation for analog HDTV. These recommendations however did not fit in the broadcasting bands which could reach home users. The standardization of MPEG-1 in 1993 also led to the acceptance of recommendations ITU or BT-709. In anticipation of these standards the Digital Video Broadcasting Organization was formed, an alliance of broadcasters, consumer electronics manufacturers and regulatory bodies. The DVB develops and agrees upon specifications which are formally standardized by ETSI, DVB created first the standard for DVBS Digital Satellite TV, DVBC Digital Cable TV and DVBT Digital Terrestrial TV. These broadcasting systems can be used for both SDTV and HDTV. In the US the Grand Alliance proposed ATSC as the new standard for SDTV and HDTV. Both ATSC and DVB were based on the MPEG-2 standard, 
although DVB systems may also be used to transmit video using the newer and more efficient H264-MPEG-4 AVC compression standards. Common for all DVB standards is the use of highly efficient modulation techniques for further reducing bandwidth, and foremost for reducing receiver hardware and antenna requirements. In 1983, the International Telecommunication Union's radio telecommunications sector set up a working party with the aim of setting a single international HDTV standard. One of the thornier issues concerned a suitable frame field refresh rate, the world already having split into two camps, 2550Hz and 3060Hz, largely due to the differences in mains frequency. The IWP 11-6 working party considered many views and throughout the 1980s served to encourage development in a number of video digital processing areas, not least conversion between the two main frame field rates using motion vectors, which led to further developments in other areas. While a comprehensive HDTV standard was not in the end established, agreement on the aspect ratio was achieved. Initially the existing 5 to 3 aspect ratio had been the main candidate but, due to the influence of widescreen cinema, the aspect ratio 16 to 9 eventually emerged as being a reasonable compromise between 5-3 and the common 1.85 widescreen cinema format. An aspect ratio of 16 to 9 was duly agreed upon at the first meeting of the IWP 11-6 working party at the BBC's research and development establishment in Kingwood Warren. The resulting ITUR recommendation ITUR BT 709-2 includes the 16 to 9 aspect ratio, a specified colorimetry, and the scan modes 1080i and 1080p. The British Freeview HD trials used MBAFF, which contains both progressive and interlaced content in the same encoding. It also includes the alternative 1440A. 1152 HDMAC scan format format was viewed by some at the ITU as an enhanced television format rather than a true HDTV format, and so was not included, although 1920A, 1080i and 1280A, 720p systems for a range of frame and field rates were defined by several USS MPTE standards. Inaugural HDTV broadcast in the United States HDTV technology was introduced in the United States in the late 1980s and made official in 1993 by the Digital HDTV Grand Alliance, a group of television, electronic equipment, communications companies consisting of AT&T Bell Labs, General Instrument, Philips, Sanoff, Thomson, Zenith and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Field testing of HDTV at 199 sites in the United States was completed August 14, 1994. The first public HDTV broadcast in the United States occurred on July 23, 1996 when the Raleigh, North Carolina television station WRAL-HD began broadcasting from the existing tower of WRAL-TV southeast of Raleigh, winning a race to be first with the HD model station in Washington, D.C which began broadcasting July 31, 1996 with the call sign WHD-TV, based out of the facilities of NBC-owned and operated station WRC-TV. The American Advanced Television Systems Committee HDTV system had its public launch on October 29, 1998, during the live coverage of astronaut John Glenn's return mission to space on board the Space Shuttle Discovery. The signal was transmitted coast to coast and was seen by the public in science centers, and other public theaters specially equipped to receive and display the broadcast. European HDTV broadcasts, the first HDTV transmissions in Europe, albeit not direct to home, began in 1990, when the Italian broadcaster RAI used the HD Mac and Muse HDTV technologies to broadcast the 1990 FIFA World Cup. The matches were shown in eight cinemas in Italy and two in Spain. The connection with Spain was made via the Olympus satellite link from Rome to Barcelona and then with a fiber optic connection from Barcelona to Madrid. After some HDTV transmissions in Europe the standard was abandoned in the mid-1990s. The first regular broadcast started on January 1, 2004 when the Belgian company Euro 1080 launched the HD1 channel with the traditional Vienna New Year's concert. 
test transmissions had been active since the IBC exhibition in September 2003, but the New Year's Day broadcast marked the official launch of the HD1 channel, and the official start of direct-to-home HDTV in Europe. Euro 1080, a division of the former and now bankrupt Belgian TV services company Alphacom, broadcast HDTV channels to break the pan-European stalemate of no HD broadcasts mean no HDTVs bought means no HD broadcasts. And kickstart HDTV interest in Europe. The HD1 channel was initially free to air and mainly comprised sporting, dramatic, musical and other cultural events broadcast with the multilingual soundtrack on a rolling schedule of four or five hours per day. These first European HDTV broadcasts used the 1080i format with MPEG2 compression on a DVBS signal from SES's Astra 1 hour satellite. Euro 1080 transmissions later changed to MPEG4 AVC compression on a DVBS2 signal in line with subsequent broadcast channels in Europe. The number of European HD channels and viewers has risen steadily since the first HDTV broadcasts with SES's annual satellite monitor market survey for 2010 reporting more than 200 commercial channels broadcasting in HD from Astra satellites, 185 million HD-capable TVs sold in Europe, and 20 million households watching HD satellite broadcasts. In December 2009 the United Kingdom became the first European country to deploy high-definition content using the new DVB-T2 transmission standard as specified in the Digital TV Group D book, on digital terrestrial television. The Freeview HD service currently contains 10 HD channels and was rolled out region by region across the UK in accordance with the digital switchover process, finally being completed in October 2012. However, Freeview HD is not the first HD TV service over digital terrestrial television in Europe. Italy's ReHD channel started broadcasting in 1080i on April 24, 2008 using the DVB-T transmission standard. In October 2008 France deployed five high-definition channels using DVB-T transmission standard on digital terrestrial distribution. Notation, HDTV broadcast systems are identified with three major parameters, frame size in pixels is defined as number of horizontal pixels a, number of vertical pixels, for example 1280AA, A720 or 1920AA, A1080. Often the number of horizontal pixels is implied from context and is omitted, as in the case of 720p and 1080p. Scanning system is identified with a letter P for progressive scanning or I for interlaced scanning. Frame rate is identified as number of video frames per second. For interlaced systems the number of frames per second should be specified, but it is not uncommon to see the field rate incorrectly used instead. If all three parameters are used, they are specified in the following form, frame size, scanning system, frame or field rate or, frame size slash, frame or field rate, scanning system. Often, frame size or frame rate can be dropped if its value is implied from context. In this case the remaining numeric parameter is specified first, followed by the scanning system. For example, 1920A, 1080p25 identifies progressive scanning format with 25 frames per second, each frame being 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels high. The 1080i25 or 1080i50 notation identifies interlaced scanning format with 25 frames per second, each frame being 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels high. The 1080i30 or 1080i60 notation identifies interlaced scanning format with 30 frames per second, each frame being 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels high. The 720p60 notation identifies progressive scanning format with 60 frames per second, each frame being 720 pixels high. 1280 pixels horizontally are implied. 50Hz systems support three scanning rates, 50i, 25p and 50p. 60Hz systems support a much wider set of frame rates, 59.94i, 60i. 23.976p, 24p, 
29.97p, 30p, 59.94p and 60p. In the days of standard definition television, the fractional rates were often rounded up to whole numbers, for example 23.976p was often called 24p, or 59.94i was often called 60i. 60 Hz high definition television supports both fractional and slightly different integer rates, therefore strict usage of notation is required to avoid ambiguity. Nevertheless, 29.97i-59.94i is almost universally called 60i, likewise 23.976p is called 24p. For commercial naming of a product, the frame rate is often dropped and is implied from context. A frame rate can also be specified without a resolution. For example, 24p means 24 progressive scan frames per second, and 50a means 25 interlaced frames per second. There is no single standard for HDTV color support. Colors are typically broadcast using a YUV color space but, depending on the underlying image generating technologies of the receiver are then subsequently converted to a GB color space using standardized algorithms. When transmitted directly through the Internet, the colors are typically pre-converted to 8-bit RGB channels for additional storage savings with the assumption that it will only be viewed only on a computer screen. As an added benefit to the original broadcasters, the losses of the pre-conversion essentially make these files unsuitable for professional TV rebroadcasting. Most HDTV systems support resolutions and frame rates defined either in the ATSC Table 3, or in EBU specification. The most common are noted below. Display resolutions, at a minimum, HDTV has twice the linear resolution of standard definition television, thus showing greater detail than either analog television or regular DVD. The technical standards for broadcasting HDTV also handle the 16 to 9 aspect ratio images without using letterboxing or anamorphic stretching, thus increasing the effect of image resolution. A very high resolution source may require more bandwidth than available in order to be transmitted without loss of fidelity. The lossy compression that is used in all digital HDTV storage and transmission systems will distort the received picture when compared to the uncompressed source. Standard frame or field rates, ATSC and DVB define the following frame rates for use with the various broadcast standards, 23.976 AHz, 24 AHz, 25 AHz, 29.97 AHz, 30 AHz, 50 AHz, 59.94 AHz, 60 AHz. The optimum format for a broadcast depends upon the type of videographic recording medium used and the image's characteristics. For best fidelity to the source the transmitted field ratio, lines, and frame rates should match those of the source. PAL, SECAM and NTSC frame rates technically apply only to analog standard definition television, not to digital or high definition broadcasts. However, with the rollout of digital broadcasting, and later HDTV broadcasting, countries retained their heritage systems. HDTV in former PAL and SECAM countries operates at a frame rate of 25 50ths while HDTV in former NTSC countries operates at 30 60ths hertz. Types of media, standard 35mm photographic film used for cinema projection has a much higher image resolution than HDTV systems, and is exposed and projected at a rate of 24 frames per second. To be shown on standard television, in PAL system countries, cinema film is scanned at the TV rate of 25 frame s, causing a speed up of 4.1%, which is generally considered acceptable. In NTSC system countries, the TV scan rate of 30 frame s would cause a perceptible speed up if the same were attempted, and the necessary correction is performed by a technique called 3-2 pull-down, over each successive pair of film frames. One is held for three video fields and the next is held for two video fields, giving a total time for the two frames of one twelfth of a second and thus achieving the correct average film frame rate. Non-cinematic HDTV video recordings intended for broadcast are typically recorded either in 720p or 1080i format as determined by the broadcaster. 
720p is commonly used for Internet distribution of high-definition video, because most computer monitors operate in progressive scan mode. 720p also imposes less strenuous storage and decoding requirements compared to both 1080i and 1080p. 1080p-24, 1080i-30, 1080i-25, and 720p-30 is most often used on Blu-ray disc. Contemporary Systems In the U.S., residents in the line of sight of television station broadcast antennas can receive free, over-the-air programming with a television set with an ATSC tuner. This is achieved with a TV aerial, just as it has been since the 1940s except now the major network signals are broadcast in high definition. As their digital signals more efficiently use the broadcast channel, many broadcasters are adding multiple channels to their signals. Laws about antennas were updated before the change to digital terrestrial broadcasts. These new laws prohibit homeowners associations and city government from banning the installation of antennas. Additionally, cable-ready TV sets can display HD content without using an external box. They have a QAM tuner built in and or a card slot for inserting a cable card. High-definition image sources include terrestrial broadcast, direct broadcast satellite, digital cable, IPTV, Blu-ray video disc, and Internet downloads. Sony's PlayStation 3 has extensive HD compatibility because of its built-in Blu-ray disc-based player, so does Microsoft's XBOX 360 with the addition of Netflix and Windows Media Center HTPC streaming capabilities, and the Zoom marketplace where users can rent or purchase digital HD content. Recently, Nintendo released a next-generation high-definition gaming platform, the Wii U, which includes TV remote control features in addition to IPTV streaming features like Netflix. The HD capabilities of the consoles has influenced some developers to port games from past consoles onto the PS3, XBOX 360 and Wii U, often with remastered or upscaled graphics. Recording and Compression HDTV can be recorded to DVHS, WVHS, to an HDTV-capable digital video recorder, or an HDTV-ready HTPC. Some cable boxes are capable of receiving or recording two or more broadcasts at a time in HDTV format, and HDTV programming, some included in the monthly cable service subscription price, some for an additional fee, can be played back with the cable company's on-demand feature. The massive amount of data storage required to archive uncompressed streams meant that inexpensive uncompressed storage options were not available in the consumer. In 2008 the Hall Page 1212 personal video recorder was introduced. This device accepts HD content through component video inputs and stores the content in MPEG2 format in a TS file or in a Blu-ray compatible format M2 TS file on the hard drive or DVD burner of a computer connected to the PVR through a USB 2.0 interface. More recent systems are able to record a broadcast high-definition program in its as broadcast format or transco to a format more compatible with Blu-ray. Analog tape recorders with brand width capable of recording analog HD signals such as WVHS recorders are no longer produced for the consumer market and are both expensive and scarce in the secondary market. In the United States, as part of the FCC's plug-and-play agreement, cable companies are required to provide customers who rent HD set-top boxes with a set-top box with functional firewire upon request. None of the direct broadcast satellite providers have offered this feature on any of their supported boxes, but some cable TV companies have. As of July 2004, boxes are not included in the FCC mandate. This content is protected by encryption known as 5C. This encryption can prevent duplication of content or simply limit the number of copies permitted, thus effectively denying most if not all fair use of the content. See also. Display motion blur, high efficiency video coding, list of digital television deployments by country, optimum HDTV viewing distance, ultra high definition television, glossary of video terms, references. Further reading, Joel Brinkley, Defining Vision, The Battle for the Future of Television, New York, Harcourt Brace. High Definition Television, 
the creation, development and implementation of HDTV technology by Philip J. C. external links, Techno History, the Italian HDTV experience from 1980s to 2006, in Italian, CRIT slash RAI, La Mini Siri, Italia a 90 euros, the first step of digital HDTV part 1, La Mini Siri, Italia a 90 euros, the first step of digital HDTV part 2, the HDTV archive project, Ultra HDTV, what is Ultra HDTV? Ultra HDTV reviews, 4K Ultra HD explanation, standard HDTV, technology, television, and competition, Sony HDTV, HDTV store, images formats for HDTV, article from the EBU technical review. High definition for Europe a Euro a progressive approach, article from the EBU technical review. High definition image formats for television production, technical report from the EBU, HDTV in Germany, lack of innovation management leads to market failure. Diffusion of HDTV in Germany from the DIW Berlin